What is going on guys? Michael from GPRisers.com and today is the first day of April and I thought it would be a good time to show you guys how to build an AMD mining rig. So for this rig build, I will go over the parts that I will be using. Um, some people like to use SSDs here at the bunker. We like to use uh, flash drives. Now there's different mining operating systems like Hive or Minerstat. Uh, we really, really enjoy using Windows 11 and booting that from a flash drive. And as many of you guys know, uh, operating a mining rig on Windows 11 is extremely easy to do. Now a quick tip there, make sure to enable all of the Windows updates and also when you get it installed to install McAfee antivirus. And also we will be running the entire rig off of Wi-Fi. This is a dongle that we got on Amazon. We'll put that over there. We will also be using one of our return risers. Um, these are actually the old generation that have our websites printed right on the boards rather than our logo. So we will be utilizing that. And also uh, we will just be starting with a AMD RX 478 gigabyte and we will connect that to one of our older boards. Uh, this is a, a Z270 SLI from MSI. So operating it on this board should be great. Now to power all of this, we will be using a very, very cheap power supply that has no name brand on it. It does, however, have a Sharpie that says it can do 1800 watts and it does say 96 efficiency and it has the word professional there. You wanna make sure that you get one that says professional on it. Now we got this on eBay. Uh, they said it was the Cadillac of power supplies and the seller was named Electronics for Less and four was spelled out like the number. So I don't know a whole lot about power supplies but you know he's the expert so we will be using this uh to power it um a little rule of thumb that we like to look for is the more colors that you see uh, especially on a motherboard cable like that the higher quality the power supply is now this does say 1800 watts on the side with a sharpie uh, stenciled in right there it does use a small power cable though. So, you know, that's great because we have tons of very thin cables lying around that we can use. And so that's pretty much the part list that we have here for this AMD build. We will also be using a fan. Uh, I had this actually in my garage. Uh, it's missing one side of it, but we will be using this fan uh, to kind of just cool off the entire rig. We're just putting one card on for today's video and we will be putting it onto a wire rack frame. I'm sure many of you guys have seen uh, the clips that many of these other YouTubers have. However, we are just going to zip tie it for now, but we'll make it look nice and pretty. And so let's go ahead and start getting this thing built. Now, I think I am going to go ahead and start with the motherboard. Uh, we can go ahead and put this uh, just directly onto the metal here. But um, I do want the rig to kind of be on the top part of the grate here. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and I think we're just gonna have it zip tied right up here. So yeah, right here we can just go ahead and get some zip ties uh, and put that, uh, you know, the zip ties through each of the motherboard holes, kind of have it, uh, you know, standing off there. All right, so um, we, it's not gonna fit just quite in there. Um, let me see what we can do here. Um, now, there's a couple different ways that you can do it, but I'm going to do it, I think, the safest way possible because that way we're not going to really damage any of the components here. All right, guys, so we're back here. We have our three 16X slots and some 1X slots here on this motherboard. Now, we will probably be utilizing all of those at some point, but right up here, if you look, um, there's an M.2 slot right here. Um, and we are not going to be utilizing that on this mining rig. So what we can do there is we can gently get a power drill and make sure not to touch any of the circuitry or anything like that. You wanna get right in between in the blank space and then go ahead and drill a nice clean hole. All right, guys, we are back. Um, the drill bit um, went a little too far in but it doesn't look like it hit anything. So um, I think we'll be good there. But I didn't take into account that that hole is actually a little bit further away from the side. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drill another one next to it. And that way I can put a zip tie between it and then I can then put another zip tie on that one and then connect it to our uh, wire rack right over there. All right, guys, we're back. Um, that That's a little bit better there. So let's go ahead and get our zip tie uh, in here. 
Okay, perfect. It came out actually a lot better than I thought it was. And so what we're gonna do here is we are going to lift this up and zip tie it onto one of the racks, but I'm gonna need two hands for that. Um, so I'll be right back. So guys, we are back. It is in here. We have it zip tied right up there. Uh, it's not really moving, uh, so that's good. So the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to get the power supply situated and ready. So for this um, professional power supply, I think I'm gonna want this on the side here so I can have room for the fan right here. So I'm gonna get a couple more zip ties and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, we are back here. I'm not gonna tighten it all the way down, leave it a little loose right there. Um, we want to make sure that we have enough slack for all these cables so that we can connect them. Man, all these cables look great. All right, guys, so now we are gonna go ahead and connect all of this. Uh, let me get this connected and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back. It's a little bit snug here. Um, I might have to uh, get some more zip ties on that side, but uh, you know, generally having a board like this is okay. So I will probably, um, I, I don't know. Oh, it kind of stuck up there a little bit. All right, perfect, fix itself. All right, guys, the next thing we are going to go ahead and do is get the uh, airflow ready for it. Let me go ahead and get this on there and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back. We have the uh, fan here ready to go. It is plugged in. So the idea behind this is to pull the air from down here, the cool air, uh, and whip it straight up into uh, the motherboard, but we're gonna put the graphics card over here so the air will kind of hit that a little bit too. And it has a toggle on the side um, for different speeds and stuff like that, which is good. You can have it on the low speed or if the cards get hot, you can kind of just, you know, tune it up. You can see the one, two, three there, um, you know, kind of wh whichever way you kind of want to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on one. I don't think we'll need anything more than that. So let me go ahead and turn this off for now and we will get the, uh, the next thing I guess is, would be the, of course, the graphics card. So let me go ahead and get that ready. I will put it onto our riser before we put it up there and hang it from the wire rack. All right, guys, now the quick way to do this is, of course, uh, get your graphics card, get your riser, uh, flip the little switch on the back of the riser down, and gently put the GPU into the riser until you hear that click. Now, once you hear the click, um, we like to do a little bit more on top of that just to make sure that it's fully seated in that 16X slot. So if you lay it down just like this on the pad and you stand the card up like this and you push on both of the major stress points right there on the card and then gently grab a hammer, hit it a couple times, it should be in there pretty snug. So now that that is on there really nice and good, we are going to go ahead and get this all set up on our AMD rig. All right, guys, we are back. We have our graphics card all ready to go. Uh, we have a zip tie. We're gonna slide it through that IO plate right there. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to put this on the grills on the top. And luckily with this graphics card, we don't have to drill any holes like we did with the motherboard. So that said, let's go ahead and get this thing all set up. Now it's a little tight fit here. So I'm probably just going to get this right here. That seems like the best spot for it. Uh, optimum airflow coming through here. So let me get this zip tie straight through here. It is over here i'm having trouble getting it straight through there but we'll get it all right so we have it right up there everything is looking good now we just have to connect the two right up at the top here oh almost fell there all right guys we are continuously trying to get this through here uh, it's a little tough to all right guys we are back uh, we got it connected nice safe and sound no issues whatsoever so that's pretty much it uh, for the rig build process. We have the motherboard all connected. Um, we have our air supply here. We have our uh, graphics card and we have our power supply safely um, attached to the side here. But as you guys can see, uh, I mean, you're probably looking at this and you're probably like, that fan is in no way going to be able to cool uh, six cards that are connected to this motherboard because the motherboard's right above it. And if you thought that when you first saw this setup, you are absolutely correct. So that's just a rookie mistake when building a rig like this. You want to make sure that the motherboard is kind of away from the airflow so that all the airflow is centered around the graphics cards. All right, guys, so we are moving this over to the right right now. And then we'll All right, guys, we're back here. I got the motherboard uh, moved over here. Uh, no issues, really. So now, I mean, it could be a little more secure. Oh, 
All right, guys, we are back. I got the motherboard nice and secure over here. Not really any problems whatsoever. And there is just a ton of air coming through right up here. I wish you guys could feel it. And what's nice about a build like this is you can kind of just bring the rack anywhere you want. It keeps things nice and cool and it, it's a mobile really, you know, it's it, a lot of these other rigs that you see back here, uh, these rig frames, uh, they're not really mobile, they're very heavy. But if you build the whole rig on a metal rack like this, um, you could just wheel it around anywhere. You could bring it to your local Starbucks or Arby's. But guys, the possibilities with a build like this are limitless. So guys, that's really all of it. Um, you know, I just wanted to share a couple secrets and tips I've been mining for a while now. So, you know, you can see right here again, uh, it has the number 96 on there and it says professional. That's really what we look for here. So that said, I am gonna go ahead and get this thing powered up for you guys. Always options, we could have built it on a rack like this, but we really wanted to. All right, guys, we are back and the rig is running just fine. So I hope uh, that this is kind of obvious by this point in the video that this was kind of a joke. Not kind of a joke, it is April 1st. I thought it would be fun to make a video on how to not make a mining rig and kind of setting up a mining rig in the worst possible way. So that said, guys, don't take any of this as advice or anything like that on how to build a rig. Everything in this video uh, is obviously just a joke. I also wanted to uh, just make note, um, I don't know if it was obvious in the video, but um, all of the parts that were used um, and, you know, the motherboard and everything like that, those were all dead motherboards, uh, dead risers. The power supply, though, is new and it was not damaged at all in this video. But I just didn't want you guys thinking I was just destroying a whole bunch of mining hardware. But that said, guys, I hope everyone has a great April Fool's Day and we'll see you guys next time.